Hello, Sweet Tooth and Flutter Pyrox is here. Gonna play my Phoenix Wright. I guess I'll turn it. Justice for all. Yeah. Why does she? The bear figurine. Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. As so there is a small cavity, just enough room to store, store a small item. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell that it's just a small jewelry box by looking at it. So this figurine is a container of sorts, is it? Yes, this can be deceiving, wouldn't you agree? Yes, this is superb craftsmanship. Oh yes, I nearly forgot. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Looks like there really was something to that bear after all. Hmm. The bear figuring. A puzzle. That's right. Hmm. But it looks like an ordinary figurine. True enough. To people who don't know, I'm sure they would never guess that this was a puzzle. So what kind of puzzle is this exactly? So you can take it apart and but and how would one go about doing that? Oh yes, I see. Ooh, this is most interesting. The boy and his new toy. It's like he's five all over again. Oh, don't mind me. Go ahead and carry on. I think he's lost it. How do you know about this? I know because I was the one who bought it. Huh? It was a souvenir from when my friend and I went to Switzerland. Then this... this was a present from you? That's right. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear, so I thought it'd be perfect for Juan. So it was a present from Miss Andrews. Witness, let's continue with your testimony. So who exactly knew how to solve this puzzle? Only the two of us, Juan and myself. 
like it was a souvenir from Switzerland. So I doubt there are that many people with the same bear in this country. But this looks like it can be easily broken. Especially if someone wanted to get at what's inside. Well, it's a toy. They can never be the same once again it's been broke once it's been broken. Who else knows that this bear is actually a small container or jewelry box? I never told anyone. As long as one never told anyone either, only the two of us knew. The two of you, huh? Then of course that means Mr. Ungard didn't know, right? I think this is about all I'm going to get for now. Mr. Wright, <clears throat> I think even you have come to realize there's one very important fact we've uncovered, and that is this: this bear is actually a jewelry box. Hmm. Now that we've agreed to this point, there's only one logical question to come next, and that is, what is inside this box? What's inside? That's right. That's what we're going to find out next. Witness? Yes? You are the only one who can open this. Please. There's a painful silence hanging over the courtroom. All eyes are on Miss Andrews now as she solves the puzzle and takes the bear apart. I've opened it. Is this what you wanted? But what is that? It looks like a note. I don't think we need to guess at what that is, do we, Mr. Wright? This is a suicide note. The suicide note? A suicide note left by Juan Cordia's former manager, Celeste Impact. Mm. Until now, no one knew of its whereabouts, but just as we suspected, it was hidden. Hidden by the victim, Juan Cordia himself. The King Celeste Impact had a very beautiful handwriting. And she just as beautifully signed her own name on this document. It's most definitely the note she left right before she committed suicide. Order. Witness, did you know about this? Yes, I did. I heard all about it from Juan. When I discovered his body, I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public. But I couldn't find it anywhere. Because it had already been taken by the killer. Everything's going at Mr. Edgeworth's pace. And now that the suicide note is found, what's the next logical question? What is written on the note? That's right. At least, that's what I would <clears> think. <throat> now then, I believe it's only appropriate the contents of the note being made known. I can't stop you, can I? I went through so much just to get my hands on it. And I was going to burn it for her sake. I'm deeply sorry, but I can't allow you to persuade me to stop. Your Honor, if you could please read the contents of the note aloud. Doesn't that immediately give her a motive to try and get the note? He was going to make it public. Yeah. This is pretty much just as bad for her as it is for our client. Very well. The judge's voice rang out loud and clear through the deathly silence courtroom. <coughs> In her note, Celeste Impax left us to left to us a record of all that had happened to her. About being used and then thrown away by Ingard. About being engaged to Corita and Ingard's role in destroying that. And about how she decided in her despair to end it all. And 
And that's all Miss Impax had to say. There's one thing I would like to say here. The prosecution has no interest in slandering Miss Strongguard. Then what? Our intention, Your Honor, is to establish a motive for murder. Isn't that correct, witness? Yes. On the night of the murder, Juan was going to make the contents of the note public, and that establishes a motive for both of you. Yeah. After the post ceremony show, he was going to hold a press conference. My word. That on guard's values above all else is refreshing like a spring breeze image. Why I had to stop this note from being made public at any cost. Celeste's suicide note. Hmm. It's on guard's fault that woman killed herself. And this time he even went so far as to kill someone to stop him from revealing that. How terrible. What a selfish person. I guess there are slimeball lawyers out there who would defend these creeps, too. There's no room for doubt here. This particular side goal was to change the suicide note. And the only person who needed this note that badly was the defendant. Let's not forget the bear with the note inside and was found at the defendant's house. Seems that we have come to the truth at last. The defendant's motives were entirely selfish. He deserves no sympathy from anyone. Ugh. How am I supposed to escape this <laughs> from this one? Why the hesitation, Phoenix? Don't she hasn't called yet, so you know what you must do. I know, I have to carry on and buy him some more time. Okay, there are two deadly pieces of evidence, the figurine and the suicide note. Maybe somehow I can find a way out of the situation through one of those. The gavel's already in the judge's hand. Phoenix, hurry. Oh my god. Isn't this kind of obvious? I don't think Edgar proved anything there other than providing motive for both of them and torturing her. Yeah. The Senate or the figurine? Which one of these should I pursue? The only person who would, actually it's worse for her because the only person who knew that was a jewelry box was her and, and the guy who died. Yeah. Objection! Please wait, Your Honor. Oh man, look at that lawyer. He's still going at it. it looks like he doesn't care that he's trying to get a killer off the hook. The assassin took this with him from the crime scene after murdering Mr. Carita. At the request of his client, of course. So, what's your point, Mr. Wright? I don't think it's possible that Mr. DeKiller's client was mad on guard. In fact, I think there is a contradiction here. You can't tell by just looking at it that this bear is really a jewelry box. The chances that Matt and guard thought the note was inside this bear are zero to none. Oh, I didn't think of it that way. Exactly, but I did think of it that way, and I thought of it, thought it was rather strange. And after all, there is no reason why Mr. Ungard would ever want a jewelry box like this. Order, order, order. Y you make a valid point, Mr. Wright. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? It was just a flash, but I think I did rather well on this one. Unfortunately, I think he believes differently. I believe a show of appreciation is in order. Huh? The defense seems to be in love with wishing more despair upon itself. I would like to direct the court's attention to this. What is that? It's a very small video camera, your honor. 
This type of camera is commonly used as a means of spying. S spying? What the? I thought that spy camera was in my possession. No, it was with Gumshoe, and Gumshoe really liked a toy. Yeah. Not on guard to the victim, both thought of each other as their biggest rival. They even went so far as to use this type of item to find each other's weaknesses. And? The victim, Juan Cordia, was being spied on. His personal life was being watched by none other than Matt on guard. Order, order! Uh huh, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You don't tell me you knew about your client's spying activities. Well, sort of. Sort of is not an acceptable answer, Mr. Wright. I see you're confused, Mr. Wright. I'm probably thinking that I have the camera that was in that stuffed bear's eye. But this camera that I have is not the same one. Last night, I searched the victim's house on a hunch. Using this. Gumshoes Bug Sweeper. <clears throat> By the way, Mr. Wright, the defendant's fingerprints were found on this camera. Man of Guard's fingerprints were on there. Well, Phoenix? Looks like those cameras were hidden all over the place, huh? What am I supposed to say to that evidence? I think this is the end. It's fairly obvious that Mr. Dongard learned of the suicide note through this. Oh, but whenever I present something like this, I have to prove that it was on the film. Yeah. He's watching the victim all along. You got me good this time. I don't have anything to counter that. Hey, hey! Now that's what it look that's what that what's that lawyer thinking. Mommy, is that the man is that man the bad killer? Shush, stop, don't look at him. The way he's sweating is just so ew, nasty. There's the kid. Yes, Chief. You figured out what you're going to do next yet yeah, next year. What I'm going to do next? Does running away like a frightened child work? He forgot one very important thing. Well, what is it, Mia? This piece of evidence he really should investigate. Something he should investigate. I would really hate to see the good prosecutor get scolded for not remembering to look into the item when he has the chance. Why are you speaking in riddles all of a sudden? Alright, I think this time we finally understand everything. Well, Mr. Wright, you don't have any further objections, do you? Of course I do. I always have objections. <laughs> Objecting is my job. What is this piece of evidence that Mia is talking about? Can I figure out what it is that still needs to be looked at, or should I let it go? No objections. <laughs> Present evidence. I have an objection, Your Honor. Hmm, that was about the weakest objection I've ever heard, Mr. Wright. Objection! Your Honor, the defense has no intention of letting this go so easily. You're beginning to sound desperate. That's just your imagination, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth, this is not like you at all. In your eagerness to prove your point, you've forgotten one very important thing. <laughs> hey, isn't that what I just said? So you're telling me I forgot something? You're so close, Edgeworth. But there's something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. Yeah, what is that? I don't know. 
Big Bear? Hmm. Oh. There's one thing Edgeworth couldn't look at. This bear. I mean, is it a little bear? Edward had a little bear, and he knew what it was, and when he handed it over. But not the note. He could not have reached the note. Only one person could have opened that for him. So it's the note. <laughs> that is. In his face, he can't have been expected it beforehand. <laughs> That is, Mr. Impact's a suicide note, right? Hmm, who knows? Miss Impact's got a gender change! <laughs> I mean, sure, this suicide note was found inside this bear. But this bear was in my possession until only a few moments ago. Which means... The handwriting on this suicide note has yet to be analyzed. Oh. So? As to whether this pivotal piece of evidence was really written by Miss Impact or not, that has yet to be even remotely confirmed. But Mr. Wright, you can't be seriously be suggested. Mr. Wright, are you saying this suicide note is a fake? Miss Andrews, you were the one who tried to pin this murder on Mr. Ungard. Who's to say you didn't create a fake suicide note and put it into this bear? How dare you! Your Honor, the defense is indiscriminately accusing the witness again. There's no evidence linking the witness to the suicide note whatsoever. But if this is a fake, then the witness is the only person who could have made it. What? Recall the witness's testimony concerning this figurine. The only person other than the victim who could solve the puzzle is the witness herself. Miss Andrews! You wrote this note, didn't you? You wrote it so you could use it to frame Matt and Guard. I... I didn't know such thing. Right, if you're going to pronounce this suicide note a fake, then show this court some evidence to support your theory. Mr. Edgeworth, you were the one who presented this scrap of paper as evidence. That means the burden of proof lies with you, the prosecution. Uh. <laughs> That's enough. Mr. Edgeworth, can you confirm the handwriting on this suicide note? The defense has stated the handwriting is yet to be analyzed. If that's the case, it seems that yet again we have reached a point where a verdict is impossible. Impossible? 
That's impossible. Good beating. The judge is going to carry this trial over one more day. I don't think Maya will physically be able to make it another day. I didn't want to have to do this, but I don't have a choice. I request that both the prosecution and defense further investigate. Hand and uh, handwriting analysis, my butt. Ingard is guilty. Look, any idiot can tell you that. I think we reached the end of the line. Guilty, 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 guilty. What is that sound? It's Gumshoe. Hello. Hello, Gumshoe. What is with them? What's with that sigh? Where's Maya? What happened to the killer? He, uh... He got away, pal. What? I'm sorry, pal. I really am. I don't know what to say besides I'm sorry. I'm sure there's one some way to make it up to you. I really do. Anyway, what's going on? We found his hideout, pal. But the two of them were already gone. This is terrible. I'm gonna keep looking for them, pal. Don't you worry. I just need a little more time. But... Don't tell me we don't, we don't have time anymore. Guilty. 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 Yeah. Do you hear that? They're calling for his head. Mr. Wright, I can't for us to come this far and... Oh. What, what is it? Can we talk to Mr. Edgeworth? I can't do that. Mr. Wright, would you please get a hold of yourself? Y yes, Your Honor. I'm about to end today's proceedings. You may take your phone calls after. Hold on, Your Honor. Edgeworth, catch. Take that. Take that. Mr. Edgeworth. Please, you gotta buy us some more time. Court is in session. He just hung up. <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Honor. You were saying... Mr. Wright, this is a court of law. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but... I am reluctant to do this, however, it appears that I have no choice but to suspend the proceedings until tomorrow. I- this time I really can't do anything. Court is now adjourned for the day. Objection! Please wait, your honor. <laughs> oh my god. Well, what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I humbly request another 30 minutes of your honor's time. For what purpose? We can perform the necessary tests on this piece of evidence in that time. Hmm. But can you really obtain your results in 30 minutes? I believe we can, your honor. But wouldn't it be better if we adjourned for today and then reconvene tomorrow? 30 minutes, please, your honor. That's all I'm asking for. Please, Your Honor. Very well. At the prosecution's request, this court will now take a 30-minute recess. But be advised that I will not allow another recess today. I'm not sure if this is helping or hurting us. The court will now take its final recess of the day. The killer. It looks like he got away again. 30 minutes. We can't find her in that time. Oh. Report. Ah, uh, is that uh, Mr. Edgeworth? We don't have time to spit it out. Right. It looks like we just missed them, sir. But the killer left a few things behind by accident in his rush to get away. A few things. 
Should we use any of them as evidence? Oh, oh, oh. I thought you'd ask how. I got the thing to left with me right now, and I'm on my way over. Really? That's odd. Any items like that are usually sent to the crime lab first. We don't have time to wait for those guys, sir. When those guys weren't looking, I swiped the stuff and ran. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, I'm not a detective anymore, so I had to. I'm really sorry, sir. I've got to put the law on hold for now. Sounds bad. I hope he doesn't get in too much trouble over this. When I hung a drunk car, I'd say they would be there in about 20 minutes, sir. Don't worry, I'll be there. Wait for me. Alright, just get here in one piece. I want to mention that no one can stop me now, sir. No one. I'm putting all the stops and running every red light. What? What? Items left by the murderer, huh? Get here in one piece. I'm running every red light. <laughs> Maybe there's something among them that will be the decisive enough to end this. Hmm? What the heck was that? Hey, what's wrong? Detective Gumshoe, answer me. He got in a crash. No one can stop me. Well, he did say he was running every red light. He got in a crash, didn't he? Yeah. But what happened? It sounded like he had an accident. I'm guessing his cell phone broke as well. But what was he thinking? We've got to hurry and call for help. We have no idea where he is. His cell phone is broken, and he wasn't driving a patrol car, so no radio either. Also, if we don't get to those items before they do, the police will take possession of them. No, we can't let that happen. Well, if there is a way we can find out where he is, then we stand a chance. Why oh why did Gumshoe have to get into an accident now? Is there any way to find out exactly where he is at the moment? Is there? Yeah. That's right, there is a way. What? How? I'm sure we can find out where Detective Gumshoe is through this. Which one of these items has a direct link to Gumshoe at all times? This? Items are people. The transceiver will take you to will have a link to the killer and apparently also... Well, no, just the killer. Huh. Beep 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 beep. What? I'm trying to make- I'm trying to make the noise. The transceiver? Remember? Gumshoe kept noting that every time this person comes close, you would hear beeping. Oh, Francisca? Yeah, remember? She has a trans- she has a tracker on Gumshoe. She can figure out where he is at all times. And then catch him with you and with him. Oh. That makes why, sense. Why are you bringing up Francisca at a time like this? Oh, I see. I'll try to get in contact with her. The chests are slim, but she's all we have. Francisca, will she even want to help us? Edgeworth. What is it? I don't have any right to judge anyone ever again. I know my client is guilty. But what I'm doing now... I'm pinning the guilt onto someone totally innocent and using the evidence to do so. It might be my turn to say, Defense Attorney Phoenix Wright chooses death. Right. It doesn't suit someone like you to cry useless tears. Whether you did your job well or not, that can only be seen after the verdict has been decided. The verdict. Is Prosecutor Edgeworth here? Yes, Bailiff. There's a phone call for you, sir. They said it was extremely urgent. The 
totally finished with the handwriting analysis. I have to take this call. In the meantime, think hard about what it is you must do. Your client sure is giving you a lot of time to yourself. Hmm. Right? Yeah. Got some time left on this video, so let's continue. Corps will now reconvene. I assume both sides are ready. Y yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. I can understand the defense acting like this. However, why do you also seem to drop, Mr. Edgeworth? What is wrong with Edward? It looks like something unexpected just happened to him. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, please tell the court the results of the handwriting analysis on Miss Ann Peck's suicide note. Yes, Your Honor. Unfortunately, we have discovered that this suicide note is a forgery. Oh my god, it really is <laughs> What? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? Oh my gosh. This, this note was not written by Miss Impacts herself. It's a fake. Oh my gosh. Order, order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, would you look here to explain what is going on? If this was not written by Miss Impacts, then who wrote it? We need more time for a more detailed analysis, however. It appears that the handwriting matches that of the victim, Mr. Juan Cornia. Oh my gosh. Mr. Corita? Corda. Mm. Oh well. Looks like Miss Impacts never left a suicide note after all. She never wrote anything about on guard. Your Honor, even though the suicide note is indeed a fake, Mr. On Guard could not have known that until facts remain unchanged. Acting under the assumption that it was real, he had plotted to possess it. Hmm. That does sound very plausible. This theory that On Guard had no idea that the suicide note was fake. Something seems a little but all uh, wrong. Defense believes that the theory of the prosecution has stated contradicts testimony. If everything the prosecution has proven up to this point is true, then it's impossible for Mr. Ungard to not have known it was a fake. I believe that there are even more important than finding out if this note is real or not. It was the attorney's badge pinned to that man's chest is real. <laughs> feels wrong, but I can't put my finger on what it is. Hmm. Actually, there is something I would like to ask. Mr. Edgeworth, you had stated something earlier to the effect of the defendant had spied on Mr. Carita's private life. 
I believe this would mean that he would have known about the note as well. Oh my goodness, you and the judge is getting him. Dang, that's it. Yes, and so naturally, this means Mr. Ungard would have known that the note was a fake. Order, order. See here, Mr. Wright. Um, yes, Your Honor? I was the one who thought of the spying thing. Jumping in and stealing my thunder like that is simply, I can't even describe it. <laughs> you were supposed to back down, but if you present evidence, you were stealing the judge's thunder. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. I couldn't even brag about embarrassing Mr. Edgeworth to my grandchild had you not. For that, I assign you a penalty, Mr. Wright. Oh my god. <laughs> what? You're supposed to keep your mouth shut just so that way the judge can have his moment. But I did back down. Yeah, but you pres you showed something first. No matter what you showed, even if it was correct, the judge would have been upset for you stealing his thunder. Really? Yeah, because you said something. How dare you say anything? Wait, 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 wait. What is happening? It literally says if you present something, even if you're correct, it's like you're risking stealing the judge's thunder. <laughs> I guess if you get it right, maybe you won't say anything. Yeah, see, I back down and he still does it. Yeah. I didn't present anything. That's weird. It's saying that it's like, you steal the judge's thing when you... Oh, that's when you choose back down. Okay, I'm reading that wrong. Oh, so I'm not supposed to back down? If you back down, you get a penalty, but it still continues. Because you stole the judge's thunder. Oh. So I do have to present that thing. You can present any of them. Anything related to it. Okay. <laughs> what is this little item called again? I'm a video camera, your honor. Well, a very small one, but... Oh, that's right. Camera. Ah, you kids and your fancy toys nowadays. <laughs> so, so if you back down, the judge solves it, and then he's like... I don't want you to steal my thunder. I don't want you to talk about it. Mr. Wright, it's my job. I'm going to own Edgeworth today. <laughs> okay. I think he was just proud that he actually owned Edgeworth once. Uh. Because Edgeworth normally is the one that seems to be winning in the trials. Okay, Judge. Stop going against me like that. <laughs> So then, the defendant knew the suicide note was a fake. And if that's true, then the suicide had suddenly changed in a very dramatic way. Situation. Exactly, Your Honor. The prosecution's theory as to what Mr. Ungard's motive for murder was, it has suddenly disappeared in the thin air. However, it still sticks to the other person. Yeah. But, Your Honor, it's not as if Mr. Ungard monitored Mr. Creator 24 hours a day. Perhaps the victim wrote the note in a place Mr. Ungard didn't know of. Well, right back at you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why don't you show us some proof that the victim made the forgery at an unknown place? Go. <laughs> <laughs> order, order, order. Mr. Edgeworth. It looks like this time it is you who have dug your his own grave. As I figured. Huh? As you figured. As I figured. It came down to this after all. Mr. Edgeworth, you're not making any sense. When I heard the results of the handwriting analysis, I thought this might happen. The question is, what's next? What next? If the prosecution can't prove Mr. Ongod's <coughs> motive through the evidence, then we must prove it from another angle. Well, I agree with you there. Your Honor, the 
prosecution would like to call witnesses to the stand at this time. Oh? Well, that's fine. However, this witness, this witness is a little unusual. Edgeworth stuttering. This is not like him at all. Unusual? Well, what sort of witness is this person, Mr. Edgeworth? This witness is one who perfectly fit to answer all the questions and all for, for all the question of. Once and for all. There you go. Who is it that hired Shelly the killer to commit murder? That's impossible. Who in the... No such person exists who can answer that question with such certainty. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth, who is this witness? It is... It's, um... Yes, go on, who is it? The man himself. Mr. Shelley DeKiller. Oh, Mr. DeKiller. How are we supposed to do this? What, what, wait, wait! Shelley DeKiller? Um, you mean the killer? Or, I mean the assassin? <laughs> yes, your honor. Did Gumshoe run into his car? Whose car? The killer's car? I don't think so. Well. He did say he was running every single red light, so yeah, it's likely that he ran into a just normal accident by doing that shit. <laughs> He's coming here? To the witness stand? Well, yes, in a manner of speaking. I recognize it's a very unusual circumstance, so I ask for your permission. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright? Yes? Is this alright with you? I should say yes, right? Do I have a choice here? Can't really do much else to drag this trial out. The defense has no objections, Your Honor. I wonder if it really is, is all right to do this. Very well then. The prosecution calls its witness to the stand. Edgeworth, is there no way other way left to us? Technically that would make him stand still for a bit. Now then, witness, um, your name and your, uh, occupation, please. They put the transceiver on the stand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he's not actually here. He's not actually here, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> they put the transceiver on the stand. What, did Killer just agree to this? Well, the killer's probably like, anything that gets my client off, fine. Are they not able to trace this if it's going on this long with a transceiver? The transceiver was never turned off. Ever. <sighs> and they know that you're being threatened through it. But no one gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's just trying to find him. <laughs> what is happening? Uh, Isn't it obvious? The killer's on the stand. You gotta cross-examine him. <laughs> <laughs> it's the killer. I gotta cross-examine my transceiver. Very good, sir. My name is Shelly the Killer, and I am a professional assassin. I I say, well, what is going on here? Your Honor. How can you remain so calm, and what is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honor, it was delivered to me just now, and it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace the source, Mr. DeKiller will testify to this court. So this must be what that urgent phone call he got earlier was about. Oh no, this will not do. I can't allow this in my court. First of all, we can't even be sure this is really Mr. DeKiller himself. Witness, please present some sort of proof that you're in fact Shelly the Killer. <sighs> I understand. Please wait a second. I'm so hungry. M M Maya! Maya! A, a voice! Mr. Wright, can you confirm anything from this? The defense has no objections to this person. We are satisfied that this man is indeed Shelly the Killer. It looks like we have run into yet another unexpected turn of events. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it doesn't seem like we have too many choices under these circumstances, so... Tell them, witness. There's one thing I'd like you to confirm before we speak of anything else. And what would that be? At the request of a client, you killed Mr. Wong Cordia. Is this correct? It is as you say. I did indeed kill Mr. Karina. Go. Well, we've been through that. Let's move on to the name of your client. Very well. This is all just a bad dream. Yes, that's it. It's a bad dream. Shelly the killer. What is he going to say? About my client. There is something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. And that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. Hmm, Mr. The Killer seems to be a very clever man. I'd almost say he seems to be mocking us. Well, he may appear to be our enemy, Your Honor. Mr. DeKille is only stating the truth. He's no hypocrite. He has always stood by this one belief. You mean about this trust between his clients and himself thing? Hmm. hmm. There seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. Well, Mr. Wright, are you ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. There's no way to know what's coming next. The stakes will collect if Phoenix. Oh my god. So I have to cross examine a transceiver. What is happening? We can hear anything that you have to say later. Can you please just tell us your clients? I don't think you understand your place, Mr. Attorney. I said, this is something I must first state. Do you know what the third first means? Sorry, go on. Well, it appears this is one witness you can't badger, Mr. Wright. It's only because you don't know how about my situation. I'll badger him anyways. The trust between you and your client. I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. If too many people knew my face, it would be quite troublesome, even though my face has a whole full-blown stitches on it. <laughs> yeah. And that is why you're testifying in this manner. This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the killer name so my clients can trust me. But couldn't someone stab you in the back and break your trust? It has never happened before, but if it ever did... Yes? That person wouldn't be my client for very long. They would certainly... Th that's enough. Please, no more. Very well. It was only hypothetical, anyway. That seems a little strange to me. I mean, you're about to tell us the name of your client. I would think that this would be very bad for them. It doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules and acted outside of their prescribed role. Their role? This person tried to implicate another of the crime in order to save themselves. And this is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. You. Who gave you the right to be so high and mighty? To the gentleman who spoke just now, excuse me, but would you care to die? Ah, no, no, I, uh, didn't say anything. The judge had better watch himself. <laughs> We understand, so please tell us the name of your client. 
I'm afraid I cannot do that. I still have a few things to say before I do. Ah, that egomaniacal. It's not good for your health to be so aggravated. You won't live very long if you let everything bother you. Somehow that coming from an assassin makes it less than comforting. I don't really care about all this extra fluff. Just tell us the name already. Try to calm down a little. It's important to try and understand his mindset. This is very steadfast and close, so you're going to have to work to get him to talk. I'm not his therapist, you know. So I have to present something, huh? Trust between you and your client. I'm sorry, but I was wondering about something you just said. You said that your client had already broken the rules. A person who frames another is the worst kind of human. And that's why you feel you can betray this person? I have no trust relation with a client who can't understand their assigned role. Just my luck, an assassin with a conscience. Who would have figured? Now then, everyone, do you think you can understand my logic? This case just keeps getting better and better. If you can't, then I'm afraid we can't proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think. Really. In that case, I believe I am prepared to disclose the information you seek. You made it crystal clear that you value trust over all else. I believe we're ready. Excellent. myself to ask the client's name. <clears throat> hmm. You can't ask it, Mr. Wright, and then I will. Witness. What is the name of your client who requested the murder of Mr. Juan Cordia? That person's name is... Adrian Andrews. <laughs> Oh. oh! Oh my god! Witness! <laughs> That's not who you told me it was earlier. Pray tell, what are you talking about, Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I know my own client, and it is Adrian Andrews. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh my god. You came here to help you. <laughs> <laughs> this, this can't be on the phone earlier. What's going on here? I guess it's Mr. The Killer who just stabbed Mr. Edgeworth in the back. Stabbed Edgeworth in the back? I turn around to get an audience with his court. Mr. The Killer told him a different name. Not on guard, perhaps. I knew it. Yes, this, this is outrageous. I was deceived. This witness is telling a very serious lie. But, but you were the one who summoned this witness. <laughs> 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 you deadly dick killer. My testimony is the truth. <laughs> the defendant at the moment is Matt Ungard. Am I correct? All I wish to do is help procure his acquittal. It, hmm. 
Wow. All of a sudden, it feels like we can actually win this. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, because they'll eat you out and said that. It pretty much helps you. Oh my god. The prosecution has failed to provide a motive and has instead provided this suicide note, which is a forgery created by the victim. Furthermore, there is a possibility the defendant himself knew it was a fake. But most definitive of all, we have heard from the assassin himself the name of his client. Mr. the Killer's client who requested the murder was not the defendant at all. <laughs> no. With all this evidence, it is obvious to me that this means that Mr. Matt Ungard is innocent. <laughs> I seem to have caused you all a bit of confusion. Please continue your discussion and call me when you have reached a verdict. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Bailiff, br please bring us Adrian Andrews in immediately. What now? With the way this is going, Ungar will be found innocent. This may be our last chance to save Maya. Yeah, but... But Edgeworth is right, the killer is fine. And Ungar, my client. I know he's guilty. These are perfect things to say in the middle of court. Can I live with myself if I win this? Who would have believed that the prosecution's own witness would absolve the defendant? <laughs> Your Honor, the prosecution requests permission to further question the witness. Shelly the killer is certainly lying under oath. Listen me. Listen everyone, please. That testimony just now, it was all one big lie. Miss Andrews. The suicide note may have been a fake, but that man, Matt, he's the reason Celeste died. And Juan's death, it was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. That testimony just now, you have to believe me, it was a horrible, horrible lie. But Mr. The Killer himself has testified. He has named you as his client. No, that's not true. Also, there is quite a bit of evidence that points to you. The knife and button donning the Nickel Samurai costume. But that's... that's... You even have a motive. We know that Miss Celeste Impacts was a large part of your life. You wanted to follow her, and you wanted revenge against the two who hurt her. I would say you have plenty of reasons to want them both dead. I... no. Mr. Wright. You... you know the truth. Tell them. Tell them the real story. Who was the real killer? Tell them. Please, help me. Yes, I know the truth. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? I believe we have reached the end of this trial. Cliffhanger! We'll pick it up in the next one. Well, thank you for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>